Hey guys, Dr. Smith here. Um, we know you guys have had a lot of questions about uh, COVID-19 and how it particularly affects your kids, um, what concerns you have about them medically, also how it's affecting them um, from a social or emotional perspective. And so we just want to take this opportunity to answer some questions for you guys and see if we could help you get you some information that might empower you to make um, good decisions for your family, good decisions for your kids. So uh, please leave us a question and we'll get to them throughout the day. Are the symptoms of COVID-19 the same in kids as adults? It does like, like kids have similar symptoms to adults with upper and lower respiratory symptoms, including cough and congestion, and also fever, although it is more common for kids to have disease without fever. Vomiting and diarrhea have also been reported um, throughout the ages and in kids. Um, but in general, it looks like kids are less severely affected than adults. If I'm worried about COVID-19, where can I go to have my child tested? Right now, our outpatient clinics at Cook Children's aren't running uh, tests for COVID-19. Um, that may change over time. It just kind of depends on what guidance we're given from the CDC and the Tarrant County Health Department. Um, right now, if your child has mild symptoms, it's likely that they don't need to be tested. If you have a known exposure to COVID-19, you may call the health department or call your pediatrician's office and they can give you guidance about uh, where to go if and when your child needs to be tested. If you have more questions about that, you can swipe up on this post and you'll see a full post about COVID-19 testing. Can you have a second COVID-19 infection after recovery? The answer to this question is we don't know for sure. With most viral infections, once you have been infected and mounted immune response, you will remain re immune to that virus. The one significant difference is flu because it changes so much, you can get reinfected year after year. And so I think we are still learning more about this. Uh, we're optimistic that once you have recovered, you would be immune, but it's hard to say for sure at this time. Why is the CDC not recommending the use of masks for the general public in the United States? The CDC says that wearing a mask for the general public walking around the community is not protective and are much more adamant about social distancing as the primary strategy for preventing COVID-19 uh, infections. Um, they do recommend that if um, someone does suspect that they might have COVID-19, that they wear a mask, uh, particularly when they are going to be around others, like when they present to healthcare uh, for diagnosis or testing. And so if you suspect you do, please call ahead so that we can mask you uh, to protect us and the other people in the clinics. Should medical care or checkups be delayed in the context of the spread of COVID-19? We at Cook Children's have made efforts to reschedule all uh, non-essential health care. So that would include checkups where no intervention is necessary, like vaccines or important testing. Uh, be pushed to uh, after May 1st for now. Um, all other checkups we're accommodating by bringing them in in the mornings to prevent their exposure to um, ill children throughout the rest of the day. And so you can swipe up to see more about our um, new changes in scheduling in an effort to protect our patients. Is my child with asthma more susceptible to COVID-19? Uh, right now, um, I think it's still early in terms of gathering data, but I think it is common sense and advisable to uh, understand that any child with a chronic lung disease condition, since this is a respiratory disease that can involve the lower respiratory system, that any child with a chronic lung condition, including asthma, should be um, taken more seriously and watched very closely for worsening of symptoms. And I think of it very much like I do the flu. So we take kids with the flu and asthma very, very seriously, uh, and I would expect that we should do the same for COVID-19. What precautions should we take regarding having our toddler around their grandparents? Um, at this stage, uh, definitely if your toddler is sick with any upper respiratory or fever, they need to be away from their grandparents. I would limit that 100%. In terms of if they're healthy, um, I still think we need to be very cautious and limit that as much as possible. 
uh, until we know more about um, how many kids are carrying the infection but don't have a lot of symptoms. And so I think on the whole, just being cautious, if you are around them, washing hands uh, frequently, um, avoiding uh, very close contact if possible is, is the wise thing to do. Should um, we continue breastfeeding if there are symptoms or um, a positive COVID-19 infection? Uh, this one is a tough one. The CDC is not providing a ton of guidance on this front. Um, so if you go look at their website, it basically says, we don't know. Um, it's pretty clear that it seems like the virus is spread via respiratory droplets. So at the very least, if you are breastfeeding, I'd recommend that you wash hands before and after feeding, uh, wear a mask if you do have symptoms. I think for now, the CDC points back towards and I rely on their guidance regarding flu in that there's kind of an expectation that if you had the flu, the child's already exposed and they continue to breastfeed may provide um, the best opportunity to um, keeping the child's you know nutrition status up and keeping them hydrated and perhaps providing them some passive immunity. Should I, as a first responder, uh, be isolating myself from my family at this time? So uh, currently there's no guidance or recommendation that um, we should be self-isolating from the rest of our family, unless of course we have symptoms. Uh, but, uh, you know, I think this is a personal decision for all families to make. Um, so me personally, you know, I'm doing everything I can here at the office to protect myself with PPE for any um, at-risk at um, exposures. And then um, not sure if it helps, but when I get home, I hop in the guest shower and um, take those clothes to, immediately to the laundry room and just, you know, do little things like that, that, uh, you know, who knows if they help or not, but it definitely helps us all feel like we're doing everything that we can. Um, and so it's a hard question and one that I, I understand asking, but uh, just not a whole lot of guidance at this point. So we're all doing our best. But a great question about um, kids, social isolation and their mental health. Um, one thing I think it's important to remember is that kids are pretty resilient. And so I think uh, as long as we as parents are working hard to uh, manage ourselves, manage our own mental health um, by, you know, doing things to help protect ourselves, that that will actually be very helpful and protective for our kids. Um, one subgroup I am a little bit worried about are kids who do have a tendency towards uh, depression and anxiety. Uh, many of them do uh, respond well to uh, their social interactions. And as we limit those, I think uh, that could become more problematic over time. And so I think encouraging them to stay in touch with their friends through technology as best we can, um, I think that's an important piece of um, helping us come through this um, safe and sound. What does flatten the curve e mean and why is that so important? So flatten the curve is a term that is meant to imply that um, the more that we um, practice social isolation and decrease the rapidity of the spread of the illness, it should um, decrease that initial high peak of illness as um, the number of cases rise and spread that out over a longer time period. Why is that important? Well, it's mainly important because we only have a set amount of resources in terms of healthcare that we can provide for people. And so even if the number of cases stayed exactly the same amount, but they were spread out over time, we should stay below that critical number uh, where we still have the resources to take care of them. And so that is particularly why um, uh, social distancing is so important. Okay, so what's the difference between isolation, quarantine, all of these terms that you're hearing thrown about? So let's start with the simplest one, which is social distancing. So that's what we're all doing right now. We're doing our best to stay at home, not gather into large groups, and basically minimize as much contact as we can to prevent the overall spread generally. Then um, you might have someone who is doing self-quarantine or self-monitoring. Um, those have a lot of overlap, but that might be somebody who was exposed to someone or thinks they might have been because they're at a big conference where someone was. 
They're not showing any signs or symptoms, but they are staying home. They are watching themselves for fever. They are minimizing, minimizing contact with other people as much as they can. Then you have isolation, which is for a confirmed or very suspected case. And that person is not having contact with anybody for any reason. And so we're expecting those people to stay home until they've been symptom free and cleared uh, by their physician to return back to um, all right guys, well, I just got home from work. So um, thank you all for your questions today. Um, thank you for uh, tuning in to learn more about coronavirus and COVID-19, how it's affecting your kiddos. Um, I know this is a really challenging time because a lot's changing so fast and um, it's hard to get clear answers. So just to know we're, we're doing our best to find the information that we can get to you guys. So please continue to follow uh, the Cook Children social media uh, platforms and my platform, the Doc Smitty, and we'll continue to do our best to keep you updated. Uh, so I'm home now. So as I said earlier, it's time for me to go take my decontamination shower, whether it matters or not. And I hope you guys are doing your best to stay safe and stay healthy as well. Thanks.